In this video, we're going to have a look at completing the square. In this particular example, we're asked to complete the square for the function 3x squared plus 12x minus 1. As a reminder, what completing the square means is rewriting your function, so your quadratic function, that's currently in the form ax squared plus bx plus c into the new form a times x minus h all squared plus k. So what we're going to be doing, and you might want to review the steps for completing the square found in the PDF if you're not familiar with them already. There's also some easier examples there for you to look at as well. But the idea is any coefficient of x squared, so a, has to be factored out of the first two terms. Once you've done that, you take the coefficient of x, divide it by 2, square it, then add and subtract it. The next step is to take the part that's been subtracted outside of the brackets, but remember that it has to get multiplied by that coefficient of x squared out front. Finally, you simplify and the stuff in the brackets should end up being a perfect square. Again, this is a little harder just to explain in words, it helps actually looking at the whole process. And again, if you'd like to see all the instructions, they are written out in the PDF that you can access through the lecture hall. So now, assuming that you do know how to do simple completing the square examples from having looked at the PDF, go ahead, try this one out on your own, just hit pause and then play when you're ready to continue. Alright, so let's go ahead and begin by writing out our function that we're working with, which is 3x squared plus 12x minus 1. Our first step is that we're going to take the 3 that's in front of the x squared and factor it out of the first two terms. So we end up with 3 times bracket x squared plus 4x and then the minus 1 remains unchanged. Again, all we did is we factored 3 out of the first two terms and so when we took the 3 factored out from 12x we ended up with 4x. Now this next step is very important and what we're going to do is we're going to take the coefficient of x which is 4, we're going to, in our head, divide it by 2 and then square it. So if we take 4, divide by 2, we're going to get 2, and we square it, we're going to get 4. And so what we do is we add 4 and then we subtract 4. So again, all you're doing is taking the coefficient of x, dividing by 2, squaring it, so you get 4, and then adding and subtracting it. And again, the purpose of this is that it will help us make a perfect square within the brackets. Next, what we have to do is we have to take the minus 4 inside the brackets and move it outside. It's not quite as simple as just taking the negative 4 outside. Remember that that negative 4 is being multiplied by the 3 out front. So when you move it outside of the brackets, you end up with negative 12. So again, all we did is in moving the negative 4 outside of the brackets, we remember that it had been multiplied by a 3 out front, so it's really a negative 12. Our last step is to recognize that the stuff in the brackets, x squared plus 4x plus 4, is now a perfect square. It's in fact x plus 2, all squared, and it's always going to be x plus whatever the coefficient of x was divided by 2. So for us, the coefficient of x was 4 divided by 2 was 2, and so we end up with x plus 2 all squared. And then the negative 12 minus 1 outside the brackets can be simplified to negative 13. And so we're done. This one worked out nicely without any fractions. There is an example too that you can have a look at after watching this video that does have fractions, so you can see what an example like that would look like. But again, just to recap, what we did in the first step is factored out the coefficient of x squared from the first two terms. In the next step, in our heads, we took the coefficient of x divided by 2 and squared it. And whatever we got, in our case, we got 4, we added and subtracted within the brackets. So again, all we're doing, and let's just write a note about this in the third line, is taking the coefficient of x, dividing it by 2, and then squaring. So 4 divided by 2 gave us the 2, then we squared to get the 4. It's just a coincidence here that the value that we got, the 4, happens to be the same as the coefficient of x. That's just because the coefficient of x divided by 2 gave us 2, which squared gave us 4. That wouldn't happen for other combinations of numbers. So again, the rule is take the coefficient of x, divide by 2, square it, then add and subtract it. Because you're adding and subtracting, that doesn't change anything, but then when you want to bring that subtracted term 
outside of the brackets because it doesn't belong in the perfect square that we're creating, the only reason for writing it within the brackets in the first step is because you have to remember to multiply it by that coefficient of x squared, the 3, out front. If you simply just write plus 4 within the brackets and minus 4 outside the brackets, it won't be true because the 4 in the brackets is multiplied by the 3, so you have to make sure that the 4 you're subtracting outside of the brackets gets also multiplied by the 3. Anyways, at that point, you have a perfect square and you can simply just go ahead and simplify the terms outside of the brackets to get your final answer. Again, have a look at the second video with example 2 in it because it's slightly harder because it involves fractions.